everyone, it's Eric with His and Hers HHQ, and this is Take Two. <laughs> um, evidently, there were technical difficulties with the other this morning's uh, video, the one recorded at 1 a.m. There was technical difficulties and it didn't get uploaded. By the time you see this, it'll probably be early evening, so, you know, that's cool. I guess, you know, it works. <laughs> All right, so quick update or a couple of quick updates. Uh, first and foremost, uh, before we get to that beauty right there, um, I am compiling a list of kits uh, because this was brought up in a comment. Um, my Creatures of the Road will have the creature from the Black Lagoon. While I already have Frankenstein's monster, the Wolfman, uh, Dracula, and the mummy picked out. I don't have the mummy's kit, but I do have it picked out. Um, and it's gonna be kind of a kit bash. I actually need a second model with that. Um, I've got several ideas floating around in my head on what the creature from the Black Lagoon could be, uh, but I also have a couple of suggestions. Uh, so I'm compiling a list and the kits that I feel would most represent the creature from the Black Lagoon, I'm talking maybe five or six various kits. Um, I'm going to compile all of those or narrow it down to five or six kits and uh, from there uh, when it gets closer to time to doing the creature from the Black Lagoon I'm going to posit the question to all of you the viewer um, I'm gonna have it uh, narrowed down and then I'm going to take your feedback on which kit I should use to do the creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, the point will be is that I will be I will be set on the I can do the creature from those kits. I'll just leave it up to you to uh, and you know whichever kit wins is the kit that uh, gets bought and gets uh, and gets a makeover. So, um, there's going to be that. Uh, second, I have to thank uh, Mark from Mark's Model Junkyard. And uh, I, I apologize. I, I wrote down your first name, but I didn't write down your uh, last name. Patrick. Uh, both of you were extraordinarily helpful and it I mean, very uh, detailed on the kind of engine that I'm putting into uh, the Wolfman here. Quite obviously, it's a Hemi. I was thinking it was a Ford, considering it came out of a Ford kit, but color me wrong, I'm willing to admit it. Um, but you guys were extraordinarily helpful with uh, all your information. Um, and I... I, you know, I did some research and uh, uh, looked up a few uh, actual Hemis with the DeSoto 8 Fire Dome valve covers. And I had initially decided, since it'd be kind of difficult to see anything anyway, I wasn't going to wire, or at least give it plug wires. Well... I found an engine, an actual engine that very closely resembles how this one is set up. And I went, well, I can do that. And it's because you guys really put it out there for me. So if you can, I don't know how well you can see, it says DeSoto 8 Fire Dome. It's getting wired up. 
Now I'm going to do the wires in red, I think. I want the I want it to contrast. And uh it's just one of those things I I um I wanted to do I either do them in yellow or gray, but uh I I like the idea of the red because it's the wolf man, you know, it blood and or you, you get the point. It's the blood flow, I guess. Um, the distributor was kind of one of those cases of how do I do that? And it was because I spotted that engine that I was able to create my own distributor. Now, I know it's kind of mocked up. It's just in primer right now. Um, but this angle piece is going to get trimmed back. Uh, the sides are. Once I have it wired up, which goes almost dead center, but it goes flat across. So all eight wires will be flat across there. Um, and then the excess will get trimmed off. That's going to get a paint job. And then I will finish getting this wired up. The, uh, the tricky part was coming up with a magneto supposed to go next to it. The distributor will go in the hole designated for the magneto, um, because that's where I saw the distributor and there will be a little bitty piece, of course, scratch built that will represent the magneto next to it. I just have to drill out that hole. So speaking of the engine, this is where we're at at the moment. I gave the black a dry wash, um, or dry brush, or dry wash. Um, I haven't had enough coffee, guys. Um, yeah, so I gave it a dry brush to really kind of highlight details and whatnot. I got the uh, transmission done in oily steel. And the uh, this part here, I don't recall what this is called. Um, I got this done in aluminum. And of course, the... Uh, uh, the carburetors done in um, uh, copper. Uh, so, you know, they're pretty well ready for the uh, bits there. And I just, I love the way that looks. It, it's just, it, it's going to be really cool. But anyway. So that is getting situated and I'm hoping by Friday's video everything will be mocked up or mocked up. Again, not enough coffee. <laughs> I've only had like two sips. Um, everything, uh, the engine will be complete or should be complete and ready for install. Um, and hopefully we'll be further along on the body, which speaking of, so yes, the body is exactly the same uh, as it was last time or in last video, the cab is actually attached now. Um, one of the things I talked about when doing this was this thing had to have ears because I mean it's just got this really mean look uh, when you're looking at it head on and this rakish angle that it's got it's got this really mean stance and I'm I, I love this stance and it just works with that visor as the um, uh, eyebrows or eye, uh, yeah, eyebrows or eyelids there and it's just, it's really pulling off this look. So early on, I said, well, I'm going to put ears on this thing. And <laughs> that's going to happen. My initial ears 
which were taped together and I showed in one of my earlier videos. Actually, there's a part of not shaped, but uh, ear nonetheless. That's kind of what I was, and that's the kind of initial. And I was like, you know, that just, I suddenly wasn't feeling it when I got to that point and it was pretty well shaped out. So I was like, no, I, so I, I scrapped them. Uh, they're in my little scrap cup over here of uh, styrene. And it's all right. I always use my scrap for something. Um, it, you know, I'll uh, melt it down some and, and make some more uh, sprue goo. Or I will literally use it as bits of scrap and create something small that I need scratch built wise. Uh, but there's also a technique, thanks to some of the people I watch actually deal with dioramas and Warhammer 40k and all of that. And they will melt down their sprues and excess plastic in acetone and create things like um, walls or, or something like that. And since I'm looking to do dioramas, I've actually got a diorama idea set up for my Creatures of the Road, which is going to be epic. Um, so it's one of those things that I can always use it. That That's, that's the point. Um, but anyway, so I, I did that. And then I have a thinner sheet here. This was the first initial cutout. And I said, no, I can't, you know, I, I can't do that. It, as you can see, it kind of, that it's like an overabundant ear. And I'm like, no, I can't, I can't do that. I, I'm, I need to come up with something a little better. And um, so I kind of did a redesign off of the cutout. And and as soon as I was done, I absolutely fell in love with uh, love with it. Um, I showed uh, uh, my wife and my kids, and they were like, "Holy cow, Dad! I kind of like that." So this before Prime, where I mean, I still have to do the um, eyebrows here. Give it. Uh, Kind of a wrinkled head maybe uh, and the beginning of the top of the muzzle look um, for that it needs ears and this is what I finally settled on they're very wolfish like and if you look, it kind of curves in towards the inside a little bit and then curves back out. It'll meet the up here at the top. And it'll be something kind of like that. So it's got this that really kind of the ears laid back, pissed off look. And that's what we're looking for or had had been looking for and you know so this is great i'm going to do a little bit of um filler on the backs where the curve is down along this line to give it a little more depth um or detail to it and of course paint it's going to get um on the inside, a little dry brushing, give it the inside of the ear kind of look, which is going to be great. So, yeah, that's that's what we're looking at ear-wise. And, I mean, I'm totally digging it. And that's the point, is I'm digging it. And, and you know, because it's the Wolfman. So onto the chassis. Now I painted this yesterday morning about 8.30. It had already been primed the day before, but yesterday we had a boatload of rain. I mean, it was almost a nonstop rain. And then when it did finally stop, the temperature stayed low, but the humidity stayed high. So 
it's still a little tacky. Now, mind you, it's just mocked up here. And of course, I do have to add some, get some black on the insides there. But I really love the way that tires are looking. I, I'm really glad I went with the gold trim look because that is just too cool. Um, but yeah, I got this front bumper on. Uh, I had, of course, as I discussed in the previous video, I got the, um, see, I can't do this. <laughs> I got this done, uh, shaped and uh, sorted. So it's almost exactly as wide as the tires need to be or where, the, where it should be anyway. Um, and while we're on the subject of the bumper, I, I know early on I discussed it was going to have headlights and, uh, I went, I was trying to figure out where to get, where to do the headlights, because of course, if you look at the front bump or front fenders, that's where the mount is for the headlight bracket. Well, I didn't want to cut up the bracket, not too bad anyway, and uh, use the headlights. Well, I don't know how well you can see this, but right there, I measured out precisely where this headlight bracket will go. And I can't do this on camera. I can't find the hole. There we go. So the headlights will go in place. The only thing I had to do was take off the um, license plate or the license plate holder. And, uh, but I left the brackets for it because I think I'm going to have uh, remount it, but on top this time. I don't know. But otherwise, the paint I use, and this will be a theme with each of the creatures. The paint I used for the frame in this case is uh, a color called um, Oil Rubbed Bronze. It's a metallic oil rub bronze from Rust-Oleum. It's the 2X Ultra Cover. And I just, I love the way it looks. It's got that, uh, well, as you can see, it's just, it's just got that look. It's really, really sharp. And I went with that for the chassis. Um, the lower portion of Frankenstein's monster has the same color. It acts as the suit jacket for Frankenstein's monster uh, for that build. And now it's the frame for this. So I, that's going to be an overarching theme for each of the creatures. It, they will have oil rubbed bronze somewhere within the main makeup of the kit. So, oh, speaking of gold trim, as you saw, the radiator shroud, I mean, that's just, that's, that's too, just too cool. I mean, that is just sharp like you would not believe. You know, it, it's just extra cool. Now, the inside, um, the dash panel, obviously, the instrument cluster is in prime uh, in primer now, and I think I'm going to actually stick with a chrome for that for that look, um, just because I, you know, but then I may just uh, put a, a dab of silly putty over each. Uh, each gauge and then paint it gold, which I think would really help accent 
the uh, dash panel, which I'm thinking this here's the wood for it. And I like the way the wood looks. I may try to go with a slightly darker uh, wood color. I, you know, try and make, uh, make it a darker red or um, even more of a walnut or chestnut look. I don't know. It, I, I like it like that, but I, I may dark, uh, try to darken it just a little bit, but I wanted something bright to kind of offset everything. The only thing keeping the dash from being done is this trim here that I left in place. I'm going to go over it with a brass or the copper from testers, you know, you know the brush paint. I'll go over it then and uh, see about uh, really bringing out the wood look. That That's the point. Uh, anyway, um, oddball thing, and you can tell me your opinion. Uh, I was thinking the fan, which is all primed up, uh, because uh, my thing is I was going to paint the fan um, silver or chrome, but remember, it's just one of those, it's the fan blade and it, it's one of those uh, things that sometimes has color, a little color, you know, a, an aluminum or even a white plastic something kind of look. Well, Wolfman Silver Bad. So what I was thinking was doing a um, chrome silver or something with it. And then going over it with the uh, transparent or clear red. Just because it's, you know, that's kind of cool. Um, but, I mean, you, tell me what you think. It, it's... it's It'll be one of those oddities un unique to this build. Um, but, you know, tell me what you think. Uh, exhaust are basically done. They're ready for me to... Uh, I went over with a black primer and then went over with a flat white. Uh, so they're pretty well done. And what you are seeing here is literally for me my very first time ever scratch or modifying or um, bashing exhaust it's literally that this is my first time ever doing something like this I don't think they turned out too bad um, so I'm kind of looking forward to getting those on there that I mean they that white is really going to be set off against all the dark colors here. And that's what I was looking for. Just something really, really cool. Uh, but anyway, since I've spent all that time doing that, I haven't gotten to finishing the modifications on the hood or the bench yet. But yeah, so we're going along. This thing's moving along pretty quick. I don't know how far along we'll be come Friday's video because this here is Wednesdays. So, um, but I will have, or I should have the engine done at least and installed. That is the biggest hope. Um, but we have a lot, a lot more body modifications to do, interior modifications, and I may change something up with the dealing with the interior, but you'll have to see what uh, what that is when um, when the time comes. So yeah, that's where we're at, and I just absolutely appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. If you haven't yet, follow us over on Facebook at His and Hers Hobby Headquarters, where we are doing our best to catch back up with posts. Uh, update photos and whatnot. Uh, and of course, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, share the content, continue to spread the message of scale model building. That's what this is all about. For me, my personal favorite is the scratch bash build. 
uh, but I do enjoy and show how, how to how you can you too new to the hobby or just returning can build straight out of the box and come up with a great kit or the next step you can start adding all that detail and just having a lot of fun with it and of course this just because that's what's in the box doesn't mean that's what has to come out of the box so yeah continue to spread uh the hobby uh the message of the hobby scale model building and uh, as always comment below where i do try to be as interactive as possible it may be five minutes it may be five days but i do try to interact and reply to your comments so again thank you very much for all the support and the comments and the information you guys really are an awesome community i'm eric have a good day